long did it take you to create this beautiful um, piece? I'm just curious, you know. Such something a... big like this takes a couple of weeks to finish. Oh, oh, fabulous. Yeah. yeah. I love the colors and everything. And I see the musical uh, sheet in the painting. Can you tell us what that's about? Um, well, I like to use uh, mixed media pages from old books, old sheet music, pages from old hymnals. Um, I like to find snippets of words that kind of tell a story. A lot of my work's inspired by my faith, so I like finding verses and things like that that, you know, have to do with the meaning. And the umbrellas particularly are supposed to represent kind of like a hope in the storm. And so I just like um, making sure people see those undertones of hopefulness in my work. Oh, wonderful. And yeah. you do incorporate even in your wildlife and yeah, birds I, and, oh, fabulous. Yeah. So do you pray before you begin? Um, not necessarily, but sometimes during, you know, just throughout the day in life. So, yeah, but <laughs> wonderful. It's Sometimes just... more than others, I should more. <laughs> <laughs> and I like you have the rendition of everyone covered in umbrellas and then the other person has no cover, which was very interesting to me. Yeah, like the girl dancing in the rain over here. Yeah. Um, she took her umbrella down, so she's just like letting the rain fall on her. Yeah. Um, so just that idea of despite the rain, um, you're still hopeful and joyful. So that one's titled And Still She Dances. So who, whatever happened to her in her life, she's still finding hope and being joyful. So. Beautiful. I love yeah. it. And the railroad, you like choo-choo trains? Um, well, I did a mission trip years ago and traveled on a lot of Eastern European old trains and that kind of inspired me to do my travel series with the trains and just that idea of that God is with us wherever we go. Um, Wonderful. Yeah, I love it. And so maybe that is you when you were traveling. Yes, it could have been. Self-portrait. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. Oh, fantastic. Well, thank you so much. You're a fabulous artist and I know you're going to just do fabulous here today and we're Thank so glad you. you came to Tampa yeah. and look forward to maybe I'll see you in Hendersonville yeah yeah for sure all right great. yeah so Thank nice you. to meet you you as well <laughs> my name is Patty what is your name Yvonne yes Yvonne. Yvonne. Yes. yes such lovely work I can't Thank believe you. there is no paint there is no paint all I do <laughs> is find my pieces of uh, paper that I tear from in between all the advertisement in magazines oh my goodness yeah. well let's go Wow, is this one of your first ones you did, or more recent? It's, well, it's a need. None of them are older than a year, so it's a, they're all pretty recent. So the most recent is my uh, white pelicans. Fabulous. Sorry. So it's made of uh, one to four layers of um, papers, and I weave my words into it, which is the title and uh, the actual. Uh, I would say the mood of the artwork. Fabulous. I love these with the girls celebrating. This yes. is fabulous. Oh my goodness. Now, how did you think to do this type well, of I, art? Well, I was a painter for 30 years and I was doing uh, acrylic painting on canvases. And then I was just, for many different reasons, I just had to change my medium. So I was, I was all. <laughs> yeah, there was other things as well, but I just needed a lighter product and so forth. So I, I wanted to have the written word in it and I didn't want to actually write it. So I thought, let me dabble in paper collage and see what I can come up with. So my whole inspiration is to make my artwork look like a painting, but it's anything but. And, you know, it must be take even more than using paint, oils or acrylics. Yes. This has to be so time consuming. It is. It, they take weeks and months because I need to find the color. I need to find the wording in the magazines. And it's not just to mix up the color. I have to sit there and go through my magazines until I find the right inspiration. Oh, so that's how it is. Wow. Yes. And you're just kind of using nature and things you see to create yes. this? Yep. It's all about Florida nature and the things that are around me. Oh, yeah. it's yep. absolutely wonderful. Thank beautiful, you. beautiful. And what is the most expensive piece that you've uh, ever sold? It's the largest one here, oh. which is 5,400. Fabulous. And that is a 48 by 60. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Just gorgeous. Oh, you might be selling another one today. You never I hope know. so. Yes, <laughs> I hope so too. Yes. 
How many art shows do you do a year? Uh, I do four to six, and it's all in January, February, and a little bit into March. Um, and it's based on that I need the entire year to make the artwork. Absolutely. It just takes so much time. Oh, I can only gosh. imagine. So. Brilliant. Oh, I really, yeah. really enjoy it. Appreciate Thank it. You. Yes. Well, do you have your card? Yes, I do. Okay, wonderful. Thank you for your time. Thank you. All, All right. right. Nice wish... My inspiration for the painting in the middle is a conversation between friends. It's an open narrative. And so the viewer is allowed to impart their own interpretation on the painting. Were they people you know that you used or just friends of well, yours? That's the inside information, but yes. <laughs> okay. But above, the, uh, above that, I'm inspired by the American painter Edward Hopper and by Caravaggio. And together, they create a claustrophobic environment where people are interacting in an ambiguous manner. Huh. I love the storytelling aspect, and I'd like to hear your interpretation of that open-ended narrative. What do you think? Uh, you know, I think that it's a joke between those two. She didn't get it. She's a little like, hmm, what do they, you know, what do they mean by that? I love that narrative. Thank you. <laughs> I might use that one. Thank you. And they're all that same way. They all have that level of uh, uncertain narrative quality, and so you're always welcome to explore the booth and have a look and see what, what narrative pops out to you. It's fabulous. It's so unique is what I really like about this art. You know, I see so many different types of art. And were you formally trained, or is this just... I went to school for art education, which means part of my classes were in the studio classrooms, and other parts were learning to be a teacher, formally. And so I piggybacked off of my education and started exploring oil painting in a sort of independently driven fashion. Oh, very nice, yes. Like you say, and if you have that on the wall, people will come and go, oh, hey, well, that is super interesting, and start using their imagination, which, you know. I think it happens intuitively. Yeah, definitely. Mm hmm Definitely. Well, thank you very much. Yes. Is there one thing you'd like somebody to know about you, you know, maybe something they don't know about you? Um, what you don't know about me is that I'm a high school art teacher. I teach drawing and painting at Lakeland High School. And I moonlight in my artist studio at Artifact in Lakeland, Florida. And that's where I create these oil paintings on canvas. Fabulous. And we're going to zoom in on your art here yeah. because uh, fabulous. I love the bathroom one, too. Mm. Well, the kids sure are lucky to have such a fabulous artist. Do you ever take them outside and let them do art outdoors? Yeah. When the weather's nice, I did that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I grew up here. I went to school in Madeira Beach. Okay. And it's right on the water there in junior high, and we would have art classes outside when it was nice. Oh, that sounds very nice. I always thought that was fabulous. Oh, seems like you're doing a nice thing here. Yeah, thank you so much. Part of it. Thank you. Hey, I'm Patty. What's Hi, your name? I'm Mackenzie. I go by Kenzie Cake. Kenzie Cake? Yeah. And what made you call yourself Kenzie Cake? Um, well, if you see, I have a lot of cake in my art. I love cake. Um, so it just kind of became part of the name. Great. And what's your favorite kind of cake? Oh, gosh. That's <laughs> double chocolate, chocolate chip. Mm, yum. And yeah. do you bake cakes, too? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> You're, you rather do the art. Yeah, I'm also yes. them. <laughs> <laughs> and I love it's so colorful and happy and free. Yeah. What's your inspiration for your art? Um, well, I love pink so obviously that's a big part um just like well cake um and just girlhood is a big part of it girlhood and um you know consumerism and just oh that's so many things <laughs> <laughs> well here let's walk over to a couple of the pieces yeah. like this one i love it you, you got kind of like the mcdonald's arches mm -hmm. going on what inspired this um, so I'm actually really pretty much into fashion too, Gucci being one of my favorite brands. So I wanted to create something that has recognizable uh, brands for people to notice, be like, hey, I know that. And um, So being like in a consumerist society too, you know, McDonald's is something that's very readily sure. available to us. Um, Gucci can be seen as a luxury, well, is a luxury brand that people kind of strive for. 
Um, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and how about this one now? I love this. Oh, thank you. Yes, yeah. isn't that? That's telling a story here. Yeah, um, so the title of it is I Cannot Bear My Sorrow, so, and bearing being like, I can't, like, show it. So it's kind of about, like, hiding your feelings. What people do. Yeah, you know, <laughs> and I like to create, you know, with the bright colors, so it's kind of, like, palatable to people. So it's like, oh, look how fun and colorful and, you know, happy. Even though it's maybe a dark thing. Yeah, yeah. kind of like what we do in our day-to-day you know, -day lives. Yeah, yeah. love that. Fabulous. And who is this now, the inspiration for her? She's beautiful. Oh, thank you. So the title of this one is Putting on the Ritz. So it's kind of about, um, you know, putting on the show, you know, getting ourselves all dolled up, everything's fine. And then, you know, the cake or the fist smashing into the cake is like a little, you know, frustration or, you know, the true feelings inside. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Where everything you think is perfect, but uh, yes. <laughs> behind the scenes right. is, yeah. Oh, love it. Very, very nice. Yeah. And this, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I don't know. I feel like this one hasn't, the meaning hasn't truly come out to me yet. Um, I love playing around with compositions and just poses. Um, so it's something I just kind of put together, um, and I, I don't know, it's kind of more of an experimental one. This is the first time I kind of incorporated the background into the painting itself. Fabulous. Uh, yeah. Yes. I like the socks and the stripes. You're working with all the different, yeah, and the kneecaps. Yeah. But I, she, I, that's you want to think about it. We should maybe have people say what they think it means. You know, yeah. everybody has, that's what's so cool about right. art. Everybody yeah. has a different interpretation. But yeah. yeah. Sometimes I learn things from people, you know, looking at my art and saying what they think. And I'm like, you know, I never thought about it that way, but <laughs> I like that idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and hello. Hello. <laughs> this is another one that I. I think the meaning has just not come to me yet. This is another one of playing around with compositions and... I love you use the vintage telephone, mm -hmm. you know, that's... You know, so we say it's about like communication in our world today. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Even though, you know, everything's ever-changing, the basic hello has not. Like, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And here we go, socks. Yep, some more Gucci um, representation. Have you done some artwork for commercial use, for no, advertising and no. print makes nothing? No, but I would love to. I think you'd be great at that, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah, print. Oh, yeah, definitely. And then all that glitters. I think, should that be you? You all that glitter? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I would like to think so. <laughs> this one kind of goes along with the putting on the Ritz um, that we saw earlier. Just, you know, putting on the lipstick, putting on the show, and then stuff in your face with the cake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, love yeah. it. Yes. Are people in your family artists or? Um, my grandmother paints. So when I was young and she would be like babysitting me, I would, you know, we'd be painting together. So that kind of sparked my interest in art and painting. Oh, fabulous! And what would be your dream situation to incorporate your art in? Oh, I'd love to just be in museums or just you know have people who love my art to collect it and be, you know, in people's homes. That would be a dream. Oh, yeah. well, I have a feeling it may happen, definitely. Oh, thank you. It's beautiful, it. it's happy, it's nice. And thank you so much. Great. Yeah. And thank yeah. you so much for yeah. talking with me. And in closing, is there something you'd like people to know about you that they might oh, not know? Oh, goodness. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Tampa, born and raised, so I've been here my whole life. I probably will continue to be here my whole life. And um, I would say that probably a lot of the colors are you know, influence from being in this bright Florida, Tampa um, environment. Yeah, I yeah. think so too. Always yeah. sunny and happy. Yeah. Right. yeah. All right. Well, a pleasure meeting yes, you. You too. Thank All you right. So much. Thank you. Hey, I'm Hi. Patty with Mom's Weird Art. Patty. What's your name? Uh, my name is Ty. Ty Willie. Hi. Yeah. I love your art. Thank it's you very so much. Unique. And what is your inspiration? So, uh, uh, my inspiration is uh, I'm kind of a dork for nostalgia. Um, I'm super observant, so much so that it kind of causes high levels of anxiety. So 
throughout the day I just observe everything that's kind of coming in. At the end of the day I use music to pull all that information out of me. So uh, most of my work is created from a subconscious. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe from dreams and things? Actually, yeah, yeah. people often ask if I have dreams like this. My dreams are pretty boring. <laughs> <laughs> While I'm awake is when all, all the action is going on. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's just oh. their ballpoint pen drawings. I use a, a ballpoint pen, watercolors, and color pencils. Yeah, and I work on this material called mylar. It's like a milky translucent film. So the, the pen part is on the top. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then the water, some of the colors is colored on the back side of it. Right. So we, this is like a concert theme this or something? This is a whole 80s piece based, it started with uh, Tubbs and Crockett from Miami Vice. Oh, yeah. And then it Excellent. turned into a whole 80s piece. Oh, fabulous. <laughs> like I said, I'm a dork for nostalgia. <laughs> and were you formally trained or? Uh, I went to the School of Hard Knocks, as they say it. Um, yeah, school wasn't really an environment that I succeeded in. It was a little too com uh, it was felt constricted and um, so I just constantly been drawing since I was in elementary school. You like to and doodle on your <laughs> book covers. On my <laughs> pants, on my shoes, on the wall, I mean all over the place. Oh. But it worked out. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> is there one in particular here that really uh, is uh, special meaning for you? Yeah, the Salvador Dali piece is the piece that's kind of um, the one that means the most for me. As you can tell, I'm a big Dali fan. Uh, when I was growing up, I, this is how I've been drawing since I was a kid. I got a lot of adults that were saying like, oh, maybe he should see counseling. Maybe there's something wrong. I felt normal. But when you hear that from adults all the time, it starts to weigh on you. Well, my high school art teacher saw what was in me, saw that I would like Salvador Dali. She turned me on to Salvador Dali's work. It changed my life because I was headed in sort of a bad direction but she saw that I was an artist and that that would help me so she showed me Dali's work had me do a whole my whole curriculum was based off of Dali's work and it just changed my life forever it turned me into an, what I consider to be an artist now so, oh, great. Yeah. have you been to the museum since have, you're here yeah, uh, yeah I every time we come down to Florida we go to the museum yeah it's I mean, beautiful he's <laughs> <laughs> oh that's great wonderful inspiration mm -hmm. yes Little dolly, all those are all dolly's pieces. Uh, and yeah. what is the most expensive piece of art that you've I've ever got? sold? The, oh, ever? Ever. Um, I have a collector that bought a piece of mine that was a custom piece that I did of um, Muhammad Ali, and he's got some wings and some tentacles coming out of him. Uh, that piece I sold for 20000 Fabulous. Yeah. So oh. that's not my typical range that I sell works at. Usually my sales are usually about 5000 to $6,000 pieces. But that one was, uh, after that one, all my other work prices started. To go up. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know, it's very time consuming, yeah. you know, and it puts, you, you throw yourself and everything into your work, yeah. you know, so. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Great. And in closing, is there something you'd like people to know about you that they might not know? Um, yeah. Uh, quote from Dali is, I'm not strange, I'm just not normal. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Hey, Cheers. thanks so much. Thank you so Appreciate much. it. I wish you the best here today. Thank you very much. Very nice. Hi, Hi, I'm Patty with Mom Squared Art. What's your name? My name is LJ Idolin. LJ, oh, nice pleasure to meet, to meet you. you. Oh, yes. I'm so glad you're here in Tampa with your beautiful art. Thank you. Mm -hmm. we, I love Tampa. It's one of our favorite shows of the year. Guest Girl is a great show. Oh, yeah. yeah. We love it. How many shows do you do a year? It depends. I would say probably around 20. Um, depending, uh, give or take. Oh, yeah. You're a busy Between lady there, then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're coming to go on all the time. Oh, fabulous. Yeah. So, how long have you been in the art world? Um, I well, in various forms. Uh, I would say about 25 years. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. And you've always been in Charleston? Or? No, we, so I started out in Asheville, North Carolina. Oh, yeah. I, um, at Biltmore Park. Yeah, okay. Very cool. Yeah. We were down in the River District. We had a oh. studio there for a long time and then we moved up to New York for a while. We did that and then we moved back down to the Asheville. city. Did you the go to the city? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, it was a nice it was a nice time there for sure. We did that. We were there for 3 years and then we moved down to Charleston after that. And so we've been there since 2015 and we love it. Oh, fantastic. So you do all the shows there. We, we travel around more than we do shows in Charleston. Um, there are a few in Charleston that are supposed to be pretty good. Oh, wonderful. So how, what this 
type of art? What inspired you to go with this? I love the colors and it's just happy. And, and it makes you think, you know, you're like, wow, oh, okay. You know, what is she expressing here? I'm sure each of them have a story. They do, they definitely do. Um, I, I love mixing up different time periods and I love playing with color and scale and, um, you know, just pulling from art history and create, creating a, you know, an updated new conversation with that. Oh, fabulous. So it's just really fun. Yeah. Not too serious. Right. It's playful, it's yeah. fun, it's entertaining. I love it. It's okay. very original, beautiful. Appreciate it. Yes, I love that one where you put the horse up with the <laughs> beautiful yes, piece of seasons. seasons. And when did you do that? That one I made last year, and it, um, it, it kind of has to do with uh, so I've got two daughters, and I've got a grandmother who is a painter as well. And I'm in the middle, and I was just thinking about different stages of life, and um, just being in the middle, looking you know at the past and the future, and just contemplating that. So that's kind of a fun piece. For me. Oh. And I love it. That's, I mean, it's all beautiful, but I especially like that one. Yeah. Yes. And what is uh, the most expensive piece of art you've ever sold? So it's not in this booth, but uh, I would say probably the most expensive was around eight thousand dollars. It was larger. And it was painting. So was it commissioned or? Is, um, no, it was not commissioned. But this body of work is all digital, so they're all editions. Um, my previous work was oil painting, so it was a different body of work. Okay, yeah. great. So these are a little more affordable since they are small editions. Got you. Yeah, just lovely. And in closing, is there something you'd like people to know? about you that, thing. that I love to make art there you go <laughs> yeah, I love traveling and um, it's, it's a good life this is this is a perfect for you definitely well thank you so much I really appreciate it pleasure meeting you and I wish you all the best all right hey there I'm so glad to be here in Tampa what's your name uh, Evan Sitar Evan Sitar hey there I see you just purchased a painting how yeah, cool so I purchase this every year this is with the uh, the Ronald McDonald Children's House and basically these are uh, artists who are disabled in one way or another and what the artists do is these children and adults are able to paint and then the Ronald McDonald House actually sells the art for them on their behalf and then pays the artist back. So it really kind of gives them a sense of self-accomplishment and uh, really that people love you know, what they've created. So every year I try to pick up a couple pieces from them. Oh, fabulous. So, that is wonderful. There's what the artist on the back. Oh. So Daniel Abound. Wonderful. And uh, it's pretty cool. That is so very cool. They're right over there if you want to check them out. And, and you're awesome art. for purchasing it. Uh, That's no, great. I, just, I think it's really cool. I love art. Yeah, I think it's just uh, really, really cool to support people in their art. Yeah, you know, motivate them to continue. So. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You as well. Thank you. It's weird art. What is it called about mom's weird art? <laughs> yes. Okay. And this is my son. I would paint and he'd say, Mom, what weird art did you make today? So I thought it'd be catchy. Uh, People remember it. Yes. So. I'll, I'll remember that. <laughs> sure. So tell me about yourself. Um, I was uh, born in Costa Rica. And now I live in Dillian, Florida, since 2012. Great. Okay. And what inspires your beautiful art here? Nature and it's uh, it's natural, it's wildlife, and it's uh, uh, sometimes dreams. I dream. I have very strange dreams. Dreams. Very very very, very weird dreams. <laughs> we are we are our mom. <laughs> <laughs> so you have weird dreams, and that inspires you. So you have these dreams, and you wake up and put it on canvas. What you? Uh, right. That's fabulous like it I love it love it I love the colors you've selected too which is very very is nice that, gold there? that is gold leaf that's gold Ooh. fabulous very very nice so how long have you been doing this uh, since I can't remember long time I'll say uh, I started uh, painting and drawing when I was around 13 so so yeah. No formal training, just you're a natural. I, uh, yes, I, I I have a bachelor degree in fine arts, and I also. Is that started, in Costa Rico? That you? Uh, no, this was in uh, the University of Hartford. 
Hartford Art School in Connecticut. Fabulous. And uh, so, yes, this end up, I've been studying with tutors and mentors all throughout my life. Wonderful, wonderful. So, do you have a ritual that you do when you begin your painting for the uh, day? Ritual. Something you do, like you do you have your La Croix? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or is it coffee? Or <laughs> no, I pray. You pray. Uh, yeah, I pray, I pray. Every time I, I want to create something, to find the right inspiration and, and the right message. Fabulous. That's, that's right. Beautiful. I love it. And now, what, what would you like this to express, the bird in flight? Um, I wrote something, and it's on around the wall. And I, I don't want to say without... Uh, <clears throat> I don't want to make a mistake, so... Because it was very meaningful for me, too. <laughs> but it's right on the wall. Right on the wall. Right, so right in the middle. All right. Well, very good. And I'll let you get back to, to painting and selling a lot of art. And in passing, um, closing, what is the most expensive piece of art you've ever sold? The most expensive piece? Um, I don't know, because I've painted murals and I've, my range is it goes from between the hundreds to the thousands. So, so it's hard to say. Uh, maybe... Uh, 20,000 maybe? Fabulous. All right. That's fantastic. Yeah. Well, maybe you'll sell another 20,000 today. Maybe. I don't have any influence <laughs> here. So. Um, but yeah, here, my pieces, they go, you know, I have 400 to 1,000 to. I think 4000 is the most expensive one here. It's beautiful. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to get and right behind here is the the inspiration for that. You sit on the wall. I absolutely love the horse and the little girl. Isn't that special? That is really beautiful and you're framing. Hey everyone, it's Patty with Mom's Weird Art. I am back here in Asheville, but just wanted to let you know what a fabulous time I had in Tampa this past weekend at the 54th annual Gasparilla Arts Festival. You know, I met the most talented, amazing, fun-loving artists there. And I just wanna thank each and every one of them for being a part of this video. I'll never forget you all and your beautiful art. And hey, I want to thank you for watching today. And if you like, please like and subscribe. All right, till next time. Bye.